Hi, my name is Tammy Minershagen. I'm the executive director of Frisco Arts. We are the city's official arts advocacy agency, and um, thanks for joining us today. Normally, we usually just meet once a month for Ladies Who Launch, but since we're all still stuck at home, uh, Lori and I talked and we decided to add in a bonus one. So i um, glad you're here and joining us. If this is your first time with Ladies Who Launch, typically we are meeting um, with a big group at Crest Infinity uh, and we have lunch together and then we have a panel of uh, one woman who's full-time in the arts and another who's full-time in business. And we discuss the intersection of the two. So um, obviously with uh, COVID-19, everybody's had to pivot and do something uh, totally different. But with crisis comes opportunity, right? So um, who better to change things up and try to be uh, creative um, than people in the arts? So now we are virtual for Ladies Who Launch for a little while. And um, I do look forward to seeing everybody in person very soon. <clears throat> Uh, the format today is that I'll share a few announcements and then we'll hear from our presenting sponsor with her takeaways from the last meeting. And then we'll get to our two panelists who are just doing an amazing job right now uh, and, and such creative people. So I know you're going to come away with something inspirational and an encouragement for you along your journey today. Uh, it is Facebook Live right now, so you can comment in and um, share a question. We'll do our best to get to it. And I uh, wanna say thank you to Anthony Barocas from stream4.us. He is our live show, live stream producer. Uh, so if you have any live stream needs, definitely talk to Anthony. Thank you, Anthony, for all you're doing behind the scenes. We might, there he is. <laughs> The man behind the curtain. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to get to our announcements. The first is that, you know, obviously, as an arts advocacy agency, um, our heart is to build a stronger community with the arts. We believe that the arts are very important, and especially right now. So, on our website, we have a, a page of resources for all of our artists, our arts organizations, and um, if you're an arts lover. One of the quotes that we put up there is, if you think artists are useless, try to spend your quarantine without music, books, poems, movies, paintings, and games. I mean, really, we need our artists to keep creating and we need them because we need to stay sane during this time. So on this uh, page, you're gonna find resources uh, financial and also things to do, and then some of the programs that we put together for our Frisco Arts community. So check it out at friscoarts.org. And if you have something you'd like to add to this list, you can definitely email me at tammy at friscoarts.org. Um, also, next Tuesday, we're going to be featuring our Smart Men. It's a Smart Men Spotlight. Uh, and we'll have Stephen Ross, who is the City of Frisco's Public Art Coordinator administrator, and uh, Swad Betovic, who is with Swad Betovic Photography and also a board member with the Frisco Chamber of Commerce. We'll hear from them about their stories, inspiration, public art, photography, and what's coming next in their world. So I hope you can join us then. We also have for our students, now that school is um, actually, you know, officially out, we want to encourage you to keep creating, and we're putting together an online and print magazine called The Quarantine. So we invite you to uh, share your photography, photography, your um, artwork, recipes, poetry, short stories, whatever you're doing to creatively document your time in quarantine. Um, you can get more information if you just go to our register tab on our Frisco Arts uh, website, and you can also check out the Youth Ambassadors uh, page there too to learn more about it. But we're really excited <clears throat> to showcase what our students are doing during this time. And then lastly, we have another unique quarantini coming up. So for our Frisco Arts members, we have missed seeing you all and uh, hanging out for our networking um, evenings, but this one is gonna be another virtual networking night called the Quarantini, and it's an 80s music and trivia night. So you need to dust off those muscle shirts and leg warmers and pump up your hair and your best 80s gear. We'll have some sing-alongs, we'll have some 80s band trivia, name that tune, and even a special guest performer. 
So you can register for this at friscoarts.org. This is sponsored by our wickedly awesome friends at New York Life. So um, that's it for the announcements. Let's get to our presenting sponsor, Lori McCagran. Lori, thanks for joining us again today uh, and for your support of this program. We could not do it without you. Well, hey. and we also couldn't do it without <laughs> Anthony. So thank you, Anthony, again, for helping yes. us make this possible. And we get a bonus in april since we now have I know. to figure out where to hold it or what to eat <laughs> so, <laughs> i know it's perfect <laughs> yes yeah, so um so thank goodness for facebook live um so i always That's like right. to kind of recap from the last meeting um those who are regular to know that i take notes during the meeting in a little place in my phone called wisdom from ladies who launch and then um, i usually share like my top three takeaways from the last meeting and the winner from last week definitely has to be joy is essential. Um, so thank you Lillian for sharing that with us and reminding us that joy is essential all the time. And then um, kind of the other two are from the best advice question and that is from Lillian's dad which is a smile on your face goes a long way. Kind of reminds me of when Love Zig that. Ziglar or somebody had said, if you see someone without a smile, share and give them yours. So um, love that. And then I um, uh, really loved how Shannon, you know, kind of um, was, grew, gave herself some grace as she um, aged. And so what she would tell her younger self was it's just be you and that's okay and not, not get caught up in yeah. being a people pleaser. And so um, that uh, those are my top three from last week. Awesome. So for those who are new or maybe don't know, I'm Lori McCaggern with Union Home Mortgage. I'm the producing area manager. So I help people with home loans, but I'm also building the North Texas area for my company. So my little, um, my little mortgage plug for today is I know a lot of people know mortgage professionals and our company is really thriving and growing during this time and just handling all the turbulence like a champ. So if you have a friend who is a mortgage loan officer, a branch manager, and maybe they're feeling some stress for their company, um, would love to have a conversation with them about you know, how maybe Union Home can help them continue to grow their business and deliver world-class customer service to um, help them continue to grow even in a turbulent market. Awesome. Thank you so much for um, sharing that. And I mean, it is a kind of a crazy time, but we need to have uh, people like you that are helping us stay kind of centered, focused, and normal. <laughs> so, so I appreciate all that you're doing, Lori, not only just, you know, for ladies who launch, but in, in your career as well, because it, it's helping other people to, to center themselves. So, um, so yes, definitely reach thank out you. to Lori um, if you have any questions. And, and thank you for joining us again, Lori, and for those top three um, takeaways. That, those are great. And I, you know what, I really think you need to put together a little booklet, like, you have like a little calendar booklet or something of all your your top takeaways i think we should do that we'll talk that's a good idea <laughs> and we can get some fabulous illustrators exactly oh my gosh we can have the photos of the ladies we can have the oh, gonna be awesome. we're gonna do it <laughs> it's a project <laughs> yes new project new project okay well, um, thank you, Lori, again. And um, now we're going to uh, introduce our panelists for today. So our first panelist is Kalika Antau. She is a local artist uh, who finds her inspiration in the beauty of nature all around us. She has exhibited her work in numerous professional galleries and has been recognized by members of Oil Painters of America. In addition to being a member of Frisco Arts, Kalika is a board member of the Visual Arts Guild of Frisco, a member of the Visual Art League of Louisville, Plano Art Association, Texas Visual Art Association, Visual Art League of Allen and McKinney Art Club. She loves the arts. <laughs> um, and we also have Chelsea Rogers yeah. with us. And Chelsea is the founder of Color Hype. She has a business administration degree and an MBA. She's a former art teacher at Princeton ISD and Centennial and Heritage High School in Frisco ISD. 
She started Color Hype in 2018. They find unique locations to host public creative classes and also private events, including Paint Your Pet, Acrylic Pour, the Dallas Skyline, and Succulents. So we'll hear more about that today. She has partnered with local restaurants to host her classes in their spaces. And she's married to Josh Rogers and has a 10 year old son named Carter, also a member of Frisco Arts. So welcome ladies to Ladies Who Launch Virtual <laughs> Edition. Thanks Hi. for being here. All look great. Um, so uh, we're gonna kind of step back in time a little bit. And Kalika, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about um, you know, where you grew up and then how you ended up coming out here to the DFW area. Okay, all right. For, for a minute oh, there, I'm sorry, for a minute there I was frozen. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I was, okay, I'm, all right, all right, thank you. Okay, first of all, Thank you, Tammy and Frisco Arts, for inviting me here to uh, to this conversation and to oh. joining the Ladies Who Launch um, program. Yeah, it's really an honor to uh, to be part of it. Can, can you all hear me? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank can you. Kalika. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, 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 sorry. All right. I'll keep going. That's okay. Um, so, how did I end up in the in the Dallas area? Um, it's a it's a long story. Um, I uh, grew up in India, was born and raised in India, and I was migrated to the United States with my family when I was 16 years of age. Um, we went to um, West Virginia. I went to high school. There's there's my picture. I think I'm 10 years old in that picture. And those are some of the, the swimming trophies that I had won at that time. And we're, I think we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, coming up here. So we went to a small town in West Virginia. Um, I went to high school there, and then uh, my father and my parents moved to Oklahoma, and um, there, that's where I went to uh, nursing school. And then after marriage, moved to Boston. I was there for about three years, and uh, my, uh, my husband at the time was, used to work for um, Texas Instruments, which is headquarters here in Richardson, Texas, and that's what brought me to the Dallas area. We moved here in 1980. Um, that's one of my pictures in, in the OR in, uh, um, as part of my healthcare career. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well uh, yeah. as we go on. But uh, that's, what the, that's how I ended up here in the Dallas area. That's what brought me here. Been here since 1980, Dallas, yeah. and I know I'm going to be dating and aging myself, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Both my children, yeah. <laughs> both my children were born here, and uh, I've seen a lot of growth and uh, a lot of change in this area, and uh, so much so. And I've been here long enough that I think uh, by now I actually consider myself uh, to be a Texan. Wow, that's those are that's big my words. Journey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not sure I would call myself a Texan yet. It's been like 13, 14 years. <laughs> I still haven't, I don't know, I don't use the word y'all, so I'm still working on that. Uh, well, yeah. Chelsea, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, let's go to you about um, your, your background and how you ended up coming out here to the DFW area. Sure, so I am originally from Texarkana, Texas, and we made the um, move to Dallas, Texas in about five years ago. So we decided that we wanted to kind of get out of um, the small town. We love the small town, families from the small town, but we wanted to kind of explore some different things and explore some different uh, cities. And it's, it's always been a dream of ours to move to a bigger city. So we, we made that leap and started off in downtown Plano, which was super fun because we lived right next to the Dart. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool to hop right down, down yeah. to downtown Dallas. And um, then we moved to Princeton, uh, Texas, because I got my first uh, job teaching high school art there. And uh, then a few years later, we moved to Frisco. And I worked in Frisco for a few years as well. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so do you guys, Kalika, let's start with you. Um, do you remember or an experience, like maybe your first experience or something where you really were excited about the power of art um, and it really drew you in? 
Right. Um, yeah, I do remember a lot of lot of different uh, instances. Growing up in India, I was always interested in art. I started out um, copying cartoons from the Sunday paper back home. Then I started sketching um, and um, charcoal portraits of famous people, like film actors and things like that, uh, people like that. And then I started painting floral paintings. Um, oh, that's in, in our home in, in India. Um, I'm pretty young there. I think I was about 20 Love something <laughs> at that time. So. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, growing up in India. I want that dress um, though. Yeah, dressed up in all the, <laughs> the Indian stuff. <laughs> yeah, yes. I still like to wear those. I mean, there's not too many occasions I get to wear that, but I do enjoy wearing the sari more than the more modern Indian outfits. Um, so anyway, I started doing that, and uh, my mother at the time would enter me in different exhibits and art competitions, although I never really won anything um, at that time. Um, mm -hmm. We also would um, make greeting cards um, and my mother would then invite family and friends over and uh, we would sell those greeting cards uh, to our friends and family something like you know 10 cents a piece or even less than that uh -huh. in indian currency back in the days um, so with that art was always also an escape for me uh, stress relief uh, you know my place mm -hmm. to go um, art and swimming were two things that were that were my escape and stress relief and places to go. Yeah. I I treasure my time alone, you know. And mm -hmm. I know uh, my artist friends out there know that artists usually work by themselves. Um, and a lot of them tend to be loners, um, but uh -huh. by far we work, work by ourselves. So those are some of the things and experiences that I had that kind of influenced mm -hmm. my interest in art. I love the fact that you were both an artist and an athlete. You know, you're a, yeah. a competitive swimmer. So <laughs> I was actually a competitive swimmer yes. as well. <laughs> what? I love oh, when that happens. That's so happens. weird. Like, How about that? that? that is oh, amazing. nice. And both of you are artists yeah. and competitive swimmers. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> neither. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Chelsea, um, do you recall, like, your... Um, an experience that really drew you to the arts from a young age. Yes. So, okay. Well, first of all, I grew up right next door to um, an artist who she was, I would, we would drive by her house and you could see her top story uh, and she would have her little studio up there and she would be painting. And I remember at a very young age thinking, man, I really want, I, I, it was just, I was just drawn to it. Like I'd never, you know, taken art classes. I never took art classes really throughout high school. Um, I only took one art class in college, which was an art appreciation class. And the most we did was like a Jackson Pollock kind of thing where we splattered paint. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, I was really more into theater, but also um, a swimmer. So uh, I wasn't ever concerned with, um, really kind of experiencing that. But uh, I remember as a young kid, we would throw like baseballs over her, <laughs> over our, uh, into her yard, <laughs> just so that we could run through and, you know, she had this little koi pond and we would like run through and um, I would just like be so amazed by all of her artwork everywhere, just um, hanging on the walls. And we would ask to go get the ball from the backyard. And um, anyways, we told her that a lot later in life and everything. But uh, she was always the person that really kind of uh, influenced me, um, mm -hmm. not super directly, but, you know, I just kind of see it. And there's just a like a passion that um, kind of developed from that that was just underlying, I feel like. That I didn't really know so how cool, to tap you know? into. Yeah. Right, right. It's it's neat when you think about those um, experiences as a kid. And, you know, a lot of times like that neighbor probably doesn't know how much that affected you and right. um, and who you've become today. Uh, and so it's just, it, it's really cool. I think that artists, you know, wherever you are, um, I know Kalika, you said kind of alone, but but alone, but effective. I mean, you're you're still making a big impact um, yeah. by doing what you're doing, right. and especially if you just have it out and people are seeing it, um, you don't really actually realize the significant impact you're making in people's lives. Yeah. And 
Um, I just, I think that's very special. So, um, so Chelsea, I know you were an art teacher and you were self-taught. I, as I read your bios, both of you guys were self-taught, which is really cool too. Um, <laughs> but you were still able to, um, you know, get into the teaching career and, and you had that for a little while. Um, so I, I didn't put this in your questions, but I, uh, I did want to ask, um, from your experience as a teacher, what did you love the most? I really loved that personal relationship that you develop with a student, right? Like you, um, you get to know them a, on a deeper level and you can, you can see, uh, I taught art one mainly. And so as you kind of develop through the school year, you start with the basics, you know, you start with the very understanding and then you start to develop as a, as an art one teacher, you, you give them different mediums to work with. So we might work with clay or we might work with charcoal or we might work with pastels. And I always would tell them, you might not love this project we're working on right this second, but throughout this year, you're going to look for that one thing that you find, you know, and um, you're going to, and it was always so cool to see the students kind of realize that and like take ownership of, of that thing. And then I would, I would encourage them to keep pushing that, you know, whatever that was, whatever they really, really loved from that. And so that's really what I love and what I miss most about teaching high school yeah. um, is that, um, just those personal relationships that you develop. I try and uh, still reach out to students that I, um, mm -hmm. you know, taught and uh, some of them even kind of work for me, <laughs> which is cool. Oh, so okay. um, yeah, cool. They, yeah. They, um, I put them to use sketching for me and doing different things within the business. So no, that's so great. Well, you're right. I mean, it is all relationships um, and we always have our favorite teachers and I'm sure you're one of them. So <laughs> I think that's great that you did that for a while. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So uh, Kalika, um, so you started out, so you went from swimming and then nursing school um, and you were in the in, in healthcare for a while and then you turned into a full-time artist. So can you tell us a little bit about um, the evolution of that? How did that happen? That's a, a long story, right? Um, <laughs> I'll try to keep it short, but this one's probably going to be a long-winded answer. That's okay. But uh, anyway, uh, growing <laughs> growing up in India, I uh, remember the time uh, when my father had a medical practice. He was a physician, and uh, he would see his pa patients in the office and then in the hospital as well. Um, our routine at the time was he would take us to the club swimming first thing every morning. Uh, after that, he would go to his office and then would go to school. And after school, my mother would take us back to the club, to the swimming pool for co competitions or um, coaching sessions, uh, practice, so on and so forth. But also at that time, my father was um, trying to leave India and to migrate to other countries such as such as United States, Canada, um, Australia, and Africa. And in order for him to do that, he had to take his medical board exams again to be licensed physician in another country. So he had lots of uh, um, healthcare books, medical books. And as a curious child, I would browse through those books um, and spend hours just reading through them and, re uh, and learning about different diseases. That's really where my interest in healthcare began. And after moving to the um, United States um, and, and with my heart for helping other people, nursing then became, became my career. I would still paint every once in a while. Yeah, the, again, here, uh, thank you, Anthony. Here's, this is uh, one of my pictures who put all dressed up in wearing a what's called a bunny suit. I was uh, inspecting a surgery department and I was going into the operating room at this time. And uh, my job as a healthcare leader was to inspect and make sure that the hospitals are meeting accreditation standards, Medicare standards, following CDC guidelines and all those kinds of things. So I would look at mm -hmm. you know, anesthesia machines, make sure that they're doing all the infection control um, practices and things like that. But in order to go into the operating room, you, you can't can't go in there with street clothes. So that's that's the garb I had on at that time in that picture. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so during my career, I would still paint here and there, um, one or two paintings. Um, I would go through um, years without uh, painting or doing anything for my art. Um, during that time in raising a family, um, photography kind of became an outlet 
for my art. Um, my kids, if, if they're out there <laughs> listening to this, I know they hated that because I was always there in front of their faces with a camera and just like, mom, go away, mom. But, <laughs> but you know how that is. And yeah, all our travels there, there I'm in Barcelona there, did a, quite a bit of world travels um, with kids and even um, afterwards as well as an adult. So family pictures, so, the, so photography was, was my outlet for my art. Um, kids appreciate that now. I've got loads and loads of um, their pictures and they love to see their own pictures when they were little kids. Uh, yes, but at the time, definitely. I was kind of a menace for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of, uh, <laughs> that's, you know, that's how all of that evolved. And um, yes. now about two years, almost two years ago now, I retired from that and um, so for, from my career. and started working or started um, spending most of my time with my art. So, and mm -hmm. the transition was not very easy. It was, it was difficult. Um, I, I typically think that both the left and right side of my brain is equally strong. So the left side of my brain was like healthcare and science and all of that. But to make that transition to the right side of the artistic side was not easy. In the beginning, when I first retired, I was like, am I really an artist? I had a hard time calling myself an artist um, hmm. because being totally self-taught, I've never had any um, art education. I just picked up pencils, you know, color pencils or um, oil paints now or acrylics. Um, and started painting, so it, it was difficult. But um, but I think now over the two years, I've done uh, some exhibits, some gallery shows. I've also done a couple of solo um, exhibits. Um, so I think over that, and having done that, um, I've, I have I think I've I've made that transition, and, and sure. I'm comfortable calling myself an artist. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a long answer. That's so. <laughs> Well, no, no, you know, it's it's really interesting because um, how you said, you know, you weren't sure what you kind of call yourself an artist. Um, sorry, I heard a little static yeah. there. <laughs> but um, but you were always an artist. And I think the same thing with Chelsea. You know, you, you were both always artists. Um, and it's really like in, in our understanding of where we are in our life and um, what we're doing, it, it's when we decide to kind of grab hold of it and say, yeah, this is actually who I am, and this is how it's going to play out yeah. in what I do. Um, but you, you were always right. an artist, and now you you claim that as your full time career. Um, but thank you for sharing that um, right. that story. Um, yeah. And Chelsea, yeah. Yeah. I think Especially it's, it's as similar retired. to yours too. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> This is where the virtual is weird. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. There's a delay also. Yeah, there's a delay and then I'm like, ah, okay. All right, well, I guess we'll um, we'll have Chelsea share a little bit uh, about your, okay, so you were a teacher and then I know that you had um, the mural at Legacy Hall come about. Was this before you started Color Hype or was it after? When did that happen? Uh, definitely after. So okay. whenever I decided to quit um, my high school teaching job, which was a, an incredible decision because it was so hard, it was extremely hard to make that call. Um, mm -hmm. I knew whenever I quit that I needed to go full force with Color Hype in order to make it a full-time job and to host painting classes and be able to provide for my family the way I had been um, up until I quit teaching that money was just play money and travel money. So it was pretty, pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. I knew I needed to be able to provide fully. Um, and so once I quit and before I officially quit, I decided to go full force, start talking with a lot of different venues, places that I knew I wanted to be, places that maybe mm -hmm. they were um, kind of uh, like a big risk, you know, like to ask them if they would know. Um, and then, so I worked on different venues like that. And so the first one that I actually ever reached out to um, was Legacy Hall. And before that, I'd only oh. been at ho hosting classes at like Hula Hut, um, places like that. So uh, I knew that I wanted some, uh, like a bigger venue that was closer to me because I'm based in Frisco. I wanted, um, and I, I knew they had a larger reach and I wanted, I, I like that. So I reached out to them and it took me a while um, uh -huh. to really kind of get in there. And then whenever I kind of built that relationship, 
um, are, building those relationships is key um, to having, you know, to being called back to do a mural like this. So I built that relationship with them and we did a community wide, I should have sent you the file. We did a community wide um, art piece that was an American flag. We pieced together, like all these people came wow. by and did an alcohol inks little paper. And then my husband and I and some friends all put it up together and assembled this huge American flag last July 4th. And uh, I kind of wow. did that as just like, a fun thing for them, you know, um, and then from there they said, okay, we trust you, <laughs> let's do some classes. And so uh, we started hosting classes there um, probably about August of last year. And uh, okay. so I'm, they're a pretty strong partner with me. And then, then we, then they asked me to do the mural. So that's how I, I kind of got that, that lead. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I did not know that. I mean, I had walked by that mural all the time. I had no idea that was you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think that's wonderful. Um, and so yeah. like, I'm looking at it right now. So it's got some of the different foods that were, uh, right. That were we focused on some hall. of the foods yeah, that are at legacy mm -hmm. hall. And, um, my husband actually helped design that. And, um, and then okay. I, and then I just paint. So <laughs> Yes, no, that's awesome. So um, let's talk about the challenges um, in your profession. So, so Kalika, with you first, what would you say is your biggest challenge as a full-time professional artist and how do you handle it? Yeah, well, that's a big question. Um, you know, there are so many challenges. Life is just, life is challenging in itself in, in, for a lot of us. Um, but as making that transition to a professional artist, the biggest challenge I have faced is trying to determine what is the value of my art. And, and I don't mean value in terms of money or, or dollars or selling my art. I mean value in terms of what do I bring to people? What do I, what, what is my message? Um, how do I contribute to society? You know, as a retired person from a, a long career, and now um, immersing into my art uh, full time, um, what value do I bring to society? What is my role as an artist? Um, what what can I bring that is something meaningful that would contribute and make a difference in someone's life? And uh, that has been that has been a struggle. And I, I know Tammy, we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, later on in this um, in this session about how those things are beginning to come together for me uh, with your leadership and with Frisco Art as well. So uh, we'll we'll talk a little more about that. But that has been the struggle, and I, I've, I've been I've been mm -hmm. you know thinking a lot about that. There are some of my paintings up here, Anthony. Thank you for putting those up. Thank you. So that's uh, yeah, that's, no, that's yeah. That's a that's a really um, provocative question. Honestly, is the what is the value? And um, I think a lot of people out there can actually relate to that same um, question and concern as an artist um, and as a, a musician, a dancer, and actually the entire um, profession of the arts right now is is wondering that same thing and also having to kind of quote unquote prove the value right now um, while everything is shut down. and uh, But we're seeing it intrinsically happen. I mean, we really are, that there is so much value to right. the arts and to right. mental health. And yes, we will talk more about that. So um, yes. thank you for bringing up that. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, yeah. how about for you as um, an artist, business owner, and then COVID-19? <laughs> but what's what is your biggest challenge <laughs> and how are you handling it? Right. So I think in general, biggest challenge on a more like non-pandemic type of world is uh, mm -hmm. keeping myself um, from not being too overworked. Um, I typically host these classes by myself and um, I have assistants and things like that. Um, but, you know, teaching 17 to 20 a month gets a little crazy. And so, um, you know, trying to do that, but also staying relevant to my customers and providing them new things that they can continue to do. Because typically they will come to a class and um, and they, they'll like what they do, that they may come to like this Inks and Skylines class and they don't know that I actually teach acrylic pouring or that I actually teach mm -hmm. paint your pet. And so, um, so that's cool that they can continue to come back. Um, but I have some customers that have done all the classes multiple times. <laughs> and so keeping... Uh -huh. um, 
you know, that relevancy and keeping, you know, them uh, excited to come back is, um, is a challenge, you know, to, to make sure that yeah. I'm offering new and fun things for them. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, I love the paint your pet. How did that come about? Oh, is, um, so I started Color Hype in January 2018, and um, a month later we got our dog Cash. And this isn't actually him; this is a customer that painted their pet. But um, I painted Cash and posted it on my Facebook page, and people started responding like, "Hey, that would be so cool! You should teach people how to paint your pet." And I was like, oh, "That's insane! Like, <laughs> for me to think that I could teach 15 to 20 people how to paint their pets." And like two hours later, they walk away um, with a with a finished product is um, a little crazy. So um, what's cool is the photos that were just shown were actually done in their homes as a virtual paint your pet where I wasn't even physically there like that one right there. Wow. I wasn't even physically there and could not even attempt to help him in person, but he still was able to follow the direction. Um, and that's how we've been setting it up on a virtual um, uh, Zoom call. But that's um, it's. Wow. It's pretty incredible um, how we've That's been able amazing. to um, kind of shift, you know, and, and this could allow me to do this uh, nationwide. You know what I mean? This could allow me to right. have a huge um, reach that I could still be able to potentially um, provide people because I have people reach out all the time. Chelsea, you should come to, you know, this city, this city. This, and I, I don't, you know, I don't have that. I don't have the people yet. I don't have that kind of reach. But this has just opened it up. This I know now it can happen. It can work. And right. so, right. Um, that's what's cool. And so with the paint your pet, that's just, uh, I always say like, if it's a crazy idea, then you just have to go for it. You just go for it because yeah. if it's crazy, <laughs> it might just work. And then you might just be a genius. <laughs> so yeah. um, it has been a genius idea. I love that. And um, everybody has, I, I've had huge responses. I teach about a hundred to 150 people a month in a non-pandemic world, <laughs> how to paint their pets. Yes. So um, it's definitely <laughs> wow. um, worth the uh, time and effort that I put into it. It does take a lot of time. Um, I customize each one, give each person specific notes for their pets. I give them the specific colors ah. they choose for their filter. So uh, it's all about choice. They get to choose their filter that, they, that I put on the photo for them. And then I teach them how to okay. paint it. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I was going to say, like, these guys looked like professionals or something because every single one was so well done. Uh, but that's really amazing that you, uh, you cater it to each each person. Um, so, Kalika, we, you have some art behind you today. Um, can you tell us one of the stories behind your art? Yeah. Oh, I think she's frozen yeah. again. Completely, uh, so, oh, am I? Oh. Oh, no, no, I think you're I, good now. Can you see me now? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm... Yes, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, when you think about style and art, I um, really don't know what my real style is, and, and I think I will always be evolving through the style. But some of the stories mm -hmm. um, that I like to tell about my art is what has inspired me, and, and what I love to do is tell people um, what drew me to a particular area in either in nature or an object sometimes. Um, and I like to help to, to love to show the world through my eyes to, to other people. And my eyes also catch on things or, or um, observe things that other people might not always see. So I, I like to bring that forth for the beauty of um, of uh, the world all around us. So a couple of things that are behind me um, right now is, um, Anthony, if you would go back to my, this is, well, this is one of them. This, <laughs> believe it or not, someone, one of the uh, person who saw this particular picture that Anthony just had up there uh, painting, uh, thought that it, those those circles look like COVID-19 viruses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, they actually, I know, I know. That's what someone said. They're like, pretty COVID-19. Oh, no, you're kidding. My, my painting, <laughs> yeah, they look like, <laughs> they thought that looked like COVID-19 virus. You know, all those slides on TV and stuff, they, they, they're kind of like yes. that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, um, those actually are, uh, water spots and water drops in um, in a in a bush, and that flower next to it, and um, spider webs weaving through that. So that's what that painting actually is. 
Um, but it's things like that, oh, the little minute little things, details that that catches my eye. Um, the other one behind behind me right now, Anthony, if you would go back there, um, let me talk about couple the this one over here, the one with the with the yellow and and gold. That one right there that I'm pointing pointing to, believe it or not, this was uh, inspired by a light fixture in the Palace of Versailles, a very very modern contemporary light fixture. Yeah, in Palace of Versailles, my sister and I traveled to France and went to the palace. And as we we're going through the security line there, um, our bags being checked, my I just the light fixture up there, the shiny light fixture just caught my eye and that's what inspired that painting. Not that that painting's done as I look at it, it looks like sails to me and it, it reminds me of sails like on a sailboat. But mm -hmm. you know, those are the kinds of things that just happen when you're painting something, you start out with one idea and then it just kind of through your painting process, it just evolves into something different. You know, another right. example is the blue one behind me. Uh, that was actually inspired by a McLaren automotive. My um, son-in-law oh, works for wow. McLaren in, in England. My my daughter, yeah, my daughter and son-in-law and their little the, their little son, they live in the outside of London, and he works for McLaren. So one one time when we were visiting, we went to the McLaren um, plant there, his work, and all these fancy, super duper fancy, expensive sports cars out there were on display and all the lights shining on them. The profile, the aerodynamics, uh, those kinds of things just kind of piqued my interest. And that's what inspired that blue painting that's, that's back there. So you never know what, you know, what would strike my fancy and, and inspire me to paint yeah. something. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I could, I think I definitely could be inspired to paint something if I saw McLaren. So <laughs> I'll uh, volunteer. Yeah, that's right. To go that's over right. to London and yeah. <laughs> see all this. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, we'll, but we'll speaking... have to do that one day. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, speaking about travel, um, I know Chelsea, you love to travel as well. Um, and in fact, you were out in Ireland and London as well. Um, right before all of this hit, but you were planning um, a trip for uh, your color hype classes, your creative tour. So tell us a little bit about what, what was going to be planned and maybe if it's gonna be happening still. Sure, so uh, that trip we took um, wasn't actually a creative tour that was just kind of like a, um, it, was a it was actually a tour that I had taken, I had planned with students before I had quit teaching last year. And so um, we actually had some students on that tour with us. And um, then it got cut short and we had to come home because of uh, the the travel bans and everything that started to come down. And so, um, but yes, I have uh, been working with a friend. Her name is Leah Thrapp. She works with, uh, or she owns a company called Flip Flops and Adventures. And she creates these curated tours and they, um, she travels all over Europe and it's, it's a very specific uh, feel like she travels with them and um, she, like really creates uh, fun experiences, but also kind of like low key where you're not like super stressed. And so I, I really wanted something like that. Um, and so it's really random how it even came about um, with the creative tour. Um, I took a, a group of students to Italy and France last summer and we created, it was a creative tour. So we, we painted in the Borghese gardens and we um, did a fresco wow. art workshop in Florence, and then we sketched in the Luxembourg Gardens, and all of these things, like having that creative experience plus a travel cultural experience really meshed together and made me really want that. <laughs> and I knew if I was yes. going to quit teaching that I probably wouldn't be able to do that with students very much longer. But I was like, you know, maybe with adults, it might be even just a little bit more fun because I could have some wine while I'm on the tour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I was yes. like, I was, yeah. I was thinking, you know, like with adults, like how would I, how would I even bring that? How would I design that? How would I do that? And so I was painting a mural for my friend Leah, who owns that company. And um, at her house and I just mentioned it to her and she was like that could happen like that that's gonna happen that's not <laughs> that's not a dream Chelsea that's right that's literally that's gonna happen and so um, yeah. we we started working on it and we put it into motion and so the the trip is actually in October um, okay. fingers crossed 
that Italy's borders will be mm -hmm. open. <laughs> um, and so, um, but we will be in Florence and then also in uh, a small Tuscany farm right outside of San Gimigiano and we'll be able to, like the, the goal here is that they will take their favorite scene, that they photo that they've taken throughout the week. They're gonna send that to okay. me and during the week, I'm gonna sketch it out for them on a, on a board, like a wooden board. And then I'm gonna teach them while we sit out on a, a little you know patio um, overlooking the farm and just, I'm gonna teach them how to paint their favorite scene. So um, it would be a wow. beautiful experience. <laughs> yeah, uh, so for sure, that, for actually, sure. that actually happens. You know, I mean, I was actually supposed yeah. to test it this week. I was supposed to be in Florence oh. and <laughs> oh. this week. It's a sad day. I know, um, it is sad. Like two days. <laughs> but yeah, it, I would actually probably be teaching the class today. Okay, so um, <laughs> a little bit devastated, but you know, it'll happen. I know. And it'll, um, I can only make it better from here. I can only plan more and make more, uh, right. you know, um, additions to it that are going to make it way more worth it when we do go and hopefully fingers crossed we will go in october like that's the goal but yes. if it doesn't happen then we will go but <laughs> it's halfway yeah. sold out yeah, right now no. um and that's so great we're super, super excited mm -hmm. that's exciting that's yeah definitely well i hope i hope the you know travel um is is it still a reality at that point i mean hopefully by october i can't imagine so um because i would love to go <laughs> i'm volunteering right, right now I'll, we'll go there and then i will also go visit the mclaren factory or whatever yes. in, in london too <laughs> yes yes we have so, to do that um, <laughs> yes so Kalika, I have one more question for you before we go to our favorite question um, that I always ask. But um, <laughs> Kalika, I know that you've got a heart um, not only for arts and, and health, but also for veterans. And that, you know, there's some things brewing, I will say, um, on how we can bring that all together. But tell mm. us a little bit why, where that came from, your heart for veterans too. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, being in healthcare, um, healthcare and veterans issues kind of go hand in hand. Our veterans have so many healthcare issues, um, physical, mental, psychological, all of those kinds of things. So that just kind of goes hand in hand together. The veterans are very close to my heart as well because there's uh, several veterans in my family uh, very close to me. Uh, my father was, a, well, that's my sister, I'll talk about her, hi, hi Akka, if you're out there, um, I know she's <laughs> listening. Uh, this is my sister, she uh, has since retired, but this is when she was in Iraq, she's a dentist by profession, and she was flying all over Iraq in those uh, Black Hawk helicopters, I, I don't know if we have, got, Anthony, you got a picture of that. Um, being shot at all over Iraq was setting up uh, dental clinics for our soldiers out there. So very, very proud of her. Um, her husband, wow. uh, Jimmy, also is a retired colonel. They're, they're both uh, U.S. Army retired colonels. My father was in World War II in the British Army as a medical officer. He was a surgeon and ran a MASH unit like Alan Alda and the TV series MASH. Um, so yeah, he was yeah. um, operating there in the, in the battlefield out there. And we heard lots of stories, um, you know, World War II stories from him. And the guy I'm dating right now, Wendell, um, hi Wendell, if you're out there, <laughs> shout out to you hey, as well. Uh, he is a Vietnam veteran. He worked on those Huey helicopters um, and wow. these helicopters during the war would go out to the battlegrounds and pick up wounded soldiers, bring them back to the medical units for, for care. So veterans are very, very close to my heart. And I think, you know, one of the ways um, by working with them through addressing their issues, I think we can give back to them um, the sacrifices that they have made for our freedom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and here the opportunity uh, with, with you, Tammy, and, and, and you'll be talking about this, I'm sure, um, there's an opportunity here to work together, bring not only my passion for art and my passion for healthcare, but also my, art, my passion and a place in my heart for veterans together to begin to address those issues um, through my art and bringing all of those things together. And, you know, earlier I talked about uh, challenges and struggles, you know, how can I be meaningful um, and mm -hmm. 
bring value to society through my art. And I think this is, um, I, I think to me, this is an opportunity for me to do that. And I'll hand it out to you to have me to talk a little more about that. Sure. Well, um, <laughs> we'll just give a little teaser. Uh, first, I love the fact that, you know, all of those worlds are coming together for you to make that impact. And um, yeah. at Frisco Arts, you yeah. know, we had started some arts panels uh, where we're exploring arts with other sectors and keeping the arts in the conversation. So we had an arts and health panel that we did last October, and then we did arts and sports. We were going to do arts and fashion um, here in the spring, but we're gonna have to postpone that one. But in October, um, arts and veterans is what's coming up next. And and then we're we're hoping to do some more initiatives with Kalika and it's we'll roll that out and people will find out. And I think it's gonna be really exciting. So, um, yeah. so let's shift gears um, a little bit exciting. and yes, <laughs> uh, and talk a little bit about um, some you know, advice that we have and the the question that I always love to ask, which is what would your current self tell your younger self and why? So Chelsea, let's start with you. Okay. Uh, so younger self, current self, that's the question, right? Yeah. So what would your current <laughs> self tell your younger self? <laughs> um, I think that uh, I would probably say just uh, trust the journey. Um, I, mm. I, gone. I feel like I've lived lots of different lives, right? So I got my MBA um, and then I was in banking. Um, I think a lot of the life experiences I have um, attribute to the success I have right now um, and how I deal with people. So with the banking, I was able to deal with customers and kind of understand that um, that grace you need to have with, you know, dealing with the public and, and you know, uh, when people have issues, how to solve them. Um, and then when I moved into teaching, I was able to uh, develop those relationships with students and understand that you needed, you, you, there are different ways to teach different people. So if you need to mm -hmm. shift the way that you're teaching, then you need to learn how to do that. And so uh, that was incredible to be able to learn that. Um, I was also a math teacher for a while <laughs> because I have a business oh, degree. Wow. That's actually how I started. And so, you know, there are so <laughs> many different things that um, I've done and that have uh, taught me so many different life experiences. And so I would just say to my younger self, don't question it just go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whatever happens, yes. let it happen. Just because mm -hmm. you, you just don't know. You don't know, you know, like yeah. what, what this is preparing you for in the future. What am I going through right now with, I mean, with COVID-19 and having to redesign the whole business, right? Um, to, um, to make it to where it's still um, a thriving business. It has, has been crazy. So you never know what, you, what right. experience that you're going through, how it's going to shape you for the future. Very Good, good word. Uh, Kalika, how about you? What would your current self tell your yeah. younger self and why? Yeah, my current self would tell my younger self to trust yourself, listen to your heart, quiet your soul, and listen to your inner voice, um, and continually try to improve yourself and continue to learn and um, grow and evolve. I mean, if we, if we don't, uh, if we're not learning, life is a journey and it's, it's, you're learning all the time. Um, and that would be something I would also tell the younger people that are out there listening to never stop learning. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be academic formal education. You learn from your mistakes. You learn from your life experiences. Learn a new hobby. Learn, learn the history of a place when you, if you're traveling somewhere. But learning, um, I think that's, that's very important. And um, mm -hmm. that's what I would tell my younger self. And, and, and I continue to tell that to myself as well. I will never stop learning. And I will always be learning and evolving and um, trying to do better, not only for myself, but to help others to, to be better and, and do better for, for themselves as well. Right, right. No, that's very good. And I think that's an important message for all of us. I mean, we're all having to learn again um, and and reinvent. And um, like yeah. Chelsea said, we got to trust the journey that there's, we can only go as far as what we can see at, for now. And then once we get there, I do believe that we'll see more 
and then we just keep going. Um, right. But we just can't give up on uh, right. what we're working on. So, well, um, I just want to thank you both. You guys were um, so real and honest and um, just really inspiring. So thank you both for, for doing what you're doing and, and creating and, uh, uh, you know, sharing your heart with others through your art. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, um, thank you all for joining us today for our bonus Ladies Who Launch. Um, I do think that uh, we've, you know, we're all on different journeys. And so the more that we can take from others and their experiences, the more it helps us on whatever journey we're on. So our next Ladies Who Launch will actually be uh, Cinco de Mayo. We had these great you know, grand plans of decorating our space. And it's also Taco Tuesday, so we were gonna have tacos. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. So I just encourage you to, you know, get out your tacos on May 5th and join us for uh, Cinco de Mayo for our virtual ladies who launch again. And um, if you'd like to support Frisco Arts, uh, we invite you to do so by going to our website and you can donate your lunch ticket. Um, if you just go to register, uh, you, can, you can click on that purple button. And of course, we have to thank our um, presenting sponsor, Lori McCagrin, again for her support. And thank you to uh, Anthony for making this possible because we wouldn't be able to stream it to you and, and get it to you guys. And remember, we'll put it all in a YouTube video and it'll be on our channel ready to go. So um, until then, I'm sending you guys a big virtual hug. Miss you all. And I look forward to seeing you soon on May 5th. See you later. <laughs>